The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. What happened? Hello, body. Hello, hello. Hey, guys. How's it going? It's good. How are you guys doing? Looks like y'all are having a good time down there. Yeah, man. We would have loved to to add you to the party, but I know you, you weren't able to make it. Yeah, sorry about that. I had something come up that was important to commitment that I had made, and uh, it just the timing nope. didn't quite work out. No worries. No worries. Glad you can make it. Yeah, virtually. glad you're able to make it virtually. Yeah. So how's everyone holding up? Is, um, is this latest crash? No one's no one's calling the suicide hotline. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> not us. Not this group. Uh, I think these are you know the type of people that don't really care about price. Yeah. Um, and then we've been too I had busy a friend to and really even care about it. But go ahead. I had a friend in another group that was kind of making some jokes, and I was like, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. <laughs> like, this shit's no joke. People actually do this. Like, you, do, you need, do you need a phone call? Like, he's like, no, no, I'm totally joking. I was like, okay. So, but seriously, though, like, if you have a friend out there that um, is talking like that, that's like, you might be able to save a life. Um, it, people have killed themselves during times like this. So, you know, we're going to get out of this. It's going to be fine, ultimately. But a lot of people um, can't see that. So just, you know, kind of a uh, kind of a sad topic, you know, but it's it's real. It does happen. So if you have a friend that's making jokes or says anything like that, you know, just just talk to him. Just follow up with him. Yeah, yeah. good good point, man. Very, very good point. Um, I, I've I've had moments, uh, you know, where I've lost quite a bit. You know, I, I don't I don't trade, uh, but there's a reason why I don't trade, because I've learned lessons. Uh from when I was younger uh, and yeah, it could be very demoralizing and very depressing. Uh, it's, it's all perception at the end of the day. So if you're, if you're out there and you're thinking re- really bad thoughts about all this, I mean, it's these, this is when you got to take a step back, put things into perception and realize uh, there's a lot more to life than money. Right. Yeah. absolutely. So, yeah. Don't do it, guys. Don't do it. Don't jump. Don't do it. <laughs> Step back from the ledge. Step back. Don't from be the ledge. a. Don't be a. Um, oh, what's it called? A uh, cliche. Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah, with, so, uh, into it. Yeah. To the way, you know. But not, <laughs> now that we set the, the state. To mind. the less, yeah, it can only get better from here, right? That's right. Can it? Can it? <laughs> it's never <laughs> well. Let's you talking about. Not killing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> the price can't be good. He, he brings up a good point, though, right? I mean, yeah, I think yeah, we've yeah, all we've all adjusted sure. personally, right? But there's those that are out there, especially young people that are like just getting into this. Maybe they they threw in their whole life savings, especially if you're young. If it's your whole life savings, then you really have nothing to worry about because you got the rest of your life. To I make, mean, it to make money. It happens. Like it really happens. <laughs> it was just it was on my mind because uh, someone yesterday and and a, a group had had said something like that, and I was like, whoa! I couldn't tell if they were serious or not, and uh, so it just kind of. You know, I mean, I've seen it happen before, so it's just, you know, it's never, it's not a bad thing to say during times like this. Now, I think for us, for Monero, like, I think a lot of us are pretty optimistic, to be honest. Um, I don't, I don't see any major problems with our chart. Um, I think the worst that happens is we double bottom. So uh, we've got this point right here, which was the low back in June. And um, I think Monero is set up so strong that I I just don't see us going any lower than this point right here. Um, I drew this yellow circle just the other day which is kind of my target. Um, If you're the trading type, I would recommend setting your buy orders probably right around 110 and then set them all the way down through like maybe $90. Let's see, I think Binance has predictably turned off um, withdrawals for a couple hours today. Here's our price divergences. Uh, This is volume weighted, so it tells you um, how price is diverging relative to volume. Um, One of the things that's so predictable about this chart, so you'll notice that... uh, you'll notice that price starts diverging downwards where Binance and everyone in concert, for whatever reason, decides that they're going to sell a bunch of Monero and list it um, at a lower price than Kraken. And of course it happens while price is crashing. Um, You'll notice they kind of had to pay that back over here if they want to keep withdrawals open. And I do think we're having an impact. I think all of the, uh, all of the kind of like social 
Reddit, Twitter stuff, we talk about, hey, Binance, why are you shutting down withdrawals? We're just constantly hammering that home. And I think it does get them negative press. Um, and I don't think they want too much of that negative press. So I think they try and ride the line as close as they can to keeping withdrawals just barely open most of the time. So you'll see these times where, um, you know, they have to pay this right here. They have to pay it back by offering a little bit higher Monero prices later on. Um, but they're, it just, it's so cliche. It just seems like every time we crash, they want to try and hammer the price even extra hard on Monero. Um, you know, it's like a psychological game. Um, let's see, the shorts here have been not too much. I mean, we're, we're a little bit net short. Um, you can see here, 2021, 2022, we were basically in net short for almost the entire bull market. Um, and then we're still in net shorts down here, but it's not anything at the um, at the magnitudes that we were at um, previously. Like here during the bull market, we had really high magnitudes on, on all of the, the positions there. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at Monero dominance. This is kind of an interesting structure. You don't, or at least I personally don't see this too much where you've kind of got this very long-term broadening structure. Um, Right now, things look pretty good. I mean, I, I would still like to hit um, this kind of vertical area right here and get back to this area. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. It's going to be really hard to break this structure overall. Um, it, you know, this kind of looks like prices may be topping out here and maybe it wants to pull back some. At some point, I would imagine we'll probably we'll probably bump into that. And the question is, if we can get above that, that's probably a good sign, but it's it's hard to say for sure that we would or not. Um, but it, this is a very long-term chart, right? This is a weekly chart. Um, and uh, let's take a look at the ratio. Yeah, ratio's just been kind of chilling, hasn't been doing too much for, for quite a long time. Like we had some really solid performance and then we just flattened out. But I mean, this is good. You know, Bitcoin crypto prices are crashing. We're still holding our own relative to Bitcoin. Um, we could take a look at some of our relative valuations as well. Yeah, here we go. This one's a good one. Uh, this is the uh, this is our price relative to Zcash, and we just keep. I mean, it's just steady up and up and up and up. Um, this was, you know, again during the bull market when they print all of their unbacked stable coins and they they pump all of their uh, their favorite scam tokens or or cash grab tokens. But I mean, we're basically back. We're at all time highs now versus Zcash. Um, so the market, the the fundamental forces of the market are slowly but steadily revealing themselves. And, and this is a trend I very much expect to continue. Um, we've got uh, Litecoin for whatever reason has been performing really well in general, relative to Monero as well. Um, we've got Ripple. At some point, I do expect that we are gonna break through this, this descending, um, this downsloping line here. Who knows when that will be? Um, it looked a lot like it might happen right here and then, uh, and then Ripple just massively pumped. Um, this might be more of the long game. It could take us a little bit longer before we break this chart. But again, we just see this everywhere. It just looks like we're, we have so much strength against other coins. And I, I think that's going to continue. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the good old trusty uh, regression analysis. Um, we'll start zoomed out again, just to, to give people a nice perspective on what we're looking at here, uh, right? This is the big picture um, <clears throat> with the red line being the absolute uh, sort of the absolute lower boundary for Bitcoin price, at least in a statistical sense, right? This doesn't account for fundamental things and whichever exchanges might go bankrupt um, soon. But ultimately we, we, we have come very, very close to, um, to hitting this line here. Yesterday we came within 13%. Um, so that's getting really close. Um, and to me, like, this is my rebuy point. I've been sitting on just, I've been sitting on a bunch of capital, a bunch of stuff that I sold, stable coins and gold and cash, and I want to rebuy. I really don't like sitting out of the market, and I especially don't like sitting in a stable coin, which has counterparty risk. Um, I would much rather buy at the statistically, you know, most opportune moment to buy, and then just chill on, on my crypto because, you know, you get all the benefits of self-custody, uh, no counterparty risk. Um, and it's, you know, it's hard, like, because occasionally we do get these crazy big pumps. And when you're missing out on those pumps and you're like, ooh, did I miss the bottom? I don't know, did I miss the bottom? But um, you know, if I give myself the best chances to get back in the market um, and then to just chill, like that's the best thing. Because honestly, I hate trading. I love markets and I love analysis and I, and I love doing all this stuff here, but I hate executing and managing trades. I just, I don't know, I don't find it enjoyable. Um, maybe I need to, to form a team with some people that can, uh, you know, I'll do the analysis and they can do the trade execution and management. I'm actually thinking about that, but uh, maybe, maybe not, you know. Uh, and then if we want to take a look at the broader markets, um, stock markets are actually doing pretty good, uh, which is kind of surprising. We, we had some pretty massive pumps here. And I would imagine that without this kind of positive movement, 
um, it's likely that uh, crypto and Bitcoin would be a little bit lower than it is now. Um, still though, to me, this is not the place that you want to try and catch a falling knife. Um, you want to be patient. You want to try and wait for those targets. Again, you know, you want to wait for Bitcoin to be somewhere in the in the fourteen thousand dollar area. Um, and then on these other charts, you know, so where Monero, I kind of expect it to double bottom again. So this is Ethereum now. I expect Ethereum to double bottom as well, somewhere in between these two um, horizontal lines here. Um, again, because that goes back to um, to other levels. If you go on the weekly chart, this this makes more sense on the weekly chart. Yeah. So again, you know. To me, this just isn't the place where you want to catch a falling knife. But what's interesting is that it looks like Ethereum and Monero are going to double bottom. But, um, you know, Bitcoin dominance right now is actually crashing, even though the rest of the markets are all crashing. Bitcoin dominance is is almost back at its uh, local swing lows from, from the past couple of years. So um, this is, again, this is kind of what I've been talking about. I've been expecting this, that Bitcoin dominance was just not going to perform nearly as well, um, this bull market. So, um you know, again, I've got this kind of yellow line circled. I leave these, I leave these big yellow um, circles for me just so I can sort of maintain my perspective. And, and then later, you know, once we get out here to uh, 2023, I can see how well uh, my, my forecast held up. Um, so again, you know, it's just, this looks like it could continually progressively move down. Um, but, uh, you know, we're getting close to a really solid moment to, to rebuy. And even if you rebought here, like if your first buy order was like 15.5, that would have been a good spot. Like, you could you could rebuy there and be somewhat confident that you're giving yourself a good risk to reward. Um, personally, I'm still going to wait till we get a bit down here, but you, you really could look at starting to rebuy. You don't want to like you don't want to YOLO your whole stack into it, but you know you could take 10, 20 percent, 30 percent, and start rebuying. Um, maybe if we if we get back down to these levels. Um, other than that, I think you know, I think everything. Oh, the dollar. Yeah. So Dixie has um, has decided to take a really big pullback. Um, these purple and blue lines is what I've said for really pretty much since um, maybe around March of this year. I've been expecting that we would get between these lines. Those are the lifetime um, upper standard deviation and kind of the next level up from that. So you can see we kind of basically just reversed at that point. So the dollar has been taking a pretty significant pullback. Um, that's a good sign that we could be in for a nice big sustained rally at some point. Um, I do expect that with the Fed raising rates still, we're going to end up back in this area again sometime next year. Um, but overall, like things, things are looking potentially okay for the markets. Uh, oh, there was the last thing that I wanted to show you was the, uh, was the inflation rate. We talked about this last week. Um, so you can see that, uh, let's, let's look at this a bit more broad picture. So um, this is all the crazy inflation we had. Again, white is CPI, blue is core inflation. The Federal Reserve says that they pay more attention to the core inflation than they do to CPI, and that's what they want to see come down. So the CPI has been making a pretty good, um, it's been coming off its highs pretty well. This, this last month's uh, data, I think it was yesterday, the CPI had gone down by half a percent, which was pretty decent. Uh, but the core only went down by 0.3%. And you can still, you can see that we're still kind of like, it's still elevated. But if we see Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, Monero hit my targets, and then let's suppose in, in December, we see this drop down, you know, below 6%, that would be a really good sign for us. Because if inflation starts to come down, the Fed can um, pause those rate hikes. And that that can only be, or that will mostly be a good thing for risk assets. Um, so yeah, the... The fact that inflation came down a little bit, I think had a big factor in why the market's pumped because the markets really want to pump here. Like you can just see that the psychology of everybody is they want those gains back. They want to get something back. They're ready to put their money back into the market and they're kind of looking for any reason to do so. So if we get good inflation numbers that come down again in December, I imagine that sets us up pretty well um, for some upside action. But um, just be careful in cryptocurrency right now. This probably isn't quite over. Um, we probably still have some more bankruptcies to be seen. Um, but, you know, just get ready. Like there there could be some really good buying opportunities coming up here uh, very soon. Uh, and with that, I think that's about all I have for you guys today. All, all right, right, man. So it could, the price could go up or the price could go down. We don't know. No, nobody does. <laughs> nobody does. What, what do you, what, well, like what, yeah. kind of, what kind of odds would you put on the bottom have already being hit, like when we saw the dip, whatever it was yesterday or day before, when it dipped dip below 16K. Man, that's tough. Um, I would give it a 30% chance. That's I pulled that out of my ass, but wow, I would wow. say 30% chance. Really, really? 
Yeah. Um, wow. Okay. And so you think it's basically just going to be, obviously it's going to be, we, we don't know what, what will cause it to continue to dwindle down, but you think that the FTX stuff has, has uh, yet to fully play out and there's a lot more pain to come with regards to the FTX. There might not necessarily be a lot more pain to come, but FTX was spidered into a lot of different stuff. There were so many different companies that had exposure to FTX. Um, I think I, I want to say I heard the rumor that BlockFi might be the next the next one to drop. There's still companies out there that haven't failed, that have been have not been liquidated, and we're probably operating on some kind of margin leverage, um, somewhat fraudulent basis um, or Ponzinomics kind of basis. Um, so you know. Uh, FTX today went officially into bankruptcy and, um, you know, that's going to take a long time to sort out. Um, and again, all of the other companies that are wrapped up and associated with FTX, you know, they might be on their last legs right now. They, they might be scrambling to try and fi figure out how to stay alive for the next couple months. Um, so it's very possible that we could see a few more of these liquidations happen. Um, especially again, cause we're in an environment where monetary contraction is just continuing. So, as the months go by, as cash becomes less and less available, at least if cash stays becoming less and less available, um, yeah, you, you could see a few more of these um, liquid liquidation bankruptcy events. Now, FTX being such a big piece of the crypto market, that's the kind of thing that we're looking at. It would say, you know, this is getting really close to an ultimate capitulation kind of event. We still have the Gox coin to come that are going to get released in like January, maybe February, maybe March, who knows, but they're getting close. Like, People are confirming their banking details. People are making accounts on Kraken. So Kraken is going to be the one receiving all of the Gox Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. They're going to be Kraken is going to be making the distribution of the coin, and then um, the Mt. Gox trustee is just going to send that all to Kraken. So there's still some black swans on the horizon. We're not out of the woods yet, but we are finally getting to that place where it's like, okay, we are finally at the potential that we're that we're at the bottom or that we're very close to the bottom. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. No. If it feels it feels like we're near. Uh, I, th I would say, you know, good time to accumulate if you haven't been already. Uh, I, yeah, I, I absolutely. I feel comfortable saying that at this point. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, I, I think it's I think the best way to do it is just to set uh, multiple buy orders. And, um, you know, that way you're getting you're getting little bites at a time. Um, you know, because the markets can go lower than, than we think, but sometimes they can just stop and not go any lower at all. So it's a good way to get yourself exposed and make sure that you're getting in the market at decent prices um, without having to necessarily just like drop your entire net worth into into a rebuy all at once. Yeah, I mean, like I was saying before, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't really pick up crypto all, all too often. Uh, I wait for, you know, opportune times like this. And uh, otherwise, I, I like to go direct from fiat into Monero. But once in a while, I do like using a centralized exchange, just easier and, you know, using my, my bank and I could get dollars in there. Uh, but it seems like whenever I go to do it at the opportune time, I just can't get into the exchange. So I had this experience <laughs> multiple times uh, in huh. historically. And now just recently again, I, so I signed into my Coinbase account for the first time in quite some time. Um, and I actually I signed in a few months ago, anticipating that I might be ready to like, you know, use my connected bank account to to quickly buy some some you know crypto, some Bitcoin, so then I can make its way into Monero, or whatever. Uh, and sure enough, when we were going, when we were, I think it was yesterday morning, early yesterday morning here in Mexico, it was when it was below sixteen, and yeah, I was I was you know, I was unable to uh, purchase on Coinbase. Uh, I went to purchase. First, I wasn't able to get in the website. Finally, I was able to get in. And then uh, when I went to make the purchase, it was saying like not enough funds in your in your bank account. And I'm like checking my bank account. I'm like, there's plenty of funds. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like talking to customer service. And they're like, oh, I don't know. It's your, it's your bank account. It's not us. It's the bank.